for Nate Dolan. Bancroft on the verge of starting off their 2019 summer 3-0 on the year. As Atwood comes set. On the stretch, rifles a fastball and he sits him down looking. Strike three and the ball game is over. As Atwood records three strikeouts in his Bancroft wow. debut. Oh, wow. Hey, what's up? Wow. <laughs> City of Bancroft, this is Christy. My name is Christy Newman. As the city director, I am responsible for city operations. I take care of streets, uh, the right, administration of the water okay. utility, the sewer utility, and different activities that go along in town. At times it can be intense. There's a lot of responsibility and I hold that dear to me that I'm responsible for the people of this town. I look at Bancroft as like your city block. We have everything here. You just have to walk a little farther, but you can find your fun here and enjoy the peace. Enjoy the serenity that a small town can bring. Coming from a big city to Bancroft, Iowa, uh, people do kind of look at us like we are a small community. We might be small, but we are mighty. We have a lot of different businesses here in town. We're very self-sufficient. We'll run to the back. I'll meet you back there and we'll load you up. Thanks, man. Thank you. And um, do things without fear of crime. You know, when you go for a walk, you don't have to worry about, the only thing you have to worry about is dogs coming after you. But no, I think, um, and there's a lot to offer, I think, for a small town. Well, I live in Bancroft because it's the best place in the world to live. You know, that's, I wouldn't live any place else. I love it here. been in business. My grandfather started in 1936 and he was on Main Street in Mancroft at that time and uh, moved out to this location in 1969 and uh, this would be technically we're on our fourth generation of data Raymonds. Uh, I'm third generation and I have two sons in the business and over the years, we've handled a number of different products, all farm related, but uh, as you see today, it's still all ag or farm related products we have here. I was named uh, Woman Entrepreneur of the Year in Iowa here. It was Deb Danzel. 
What do I do? Um, every day uh, we come here, uh, we usually distill six days a week. Um, so we start off by cooking, uh, creating the mash, the fermentation, distilling. Uh, we also bottle out, get everything packaged to be shipped out to the warehouse in Ankeny. It's important for our community to have an identity, and for Bancroft, it's baseball. People in Bancroft have such a history with baseball, and I think what makes the Bandits special in this community is that Sponsors. the people embrace them as their own. When you infuse 25 people into a town of 700, you notice that. Those of us that have lived here all our lives know what it was like 50 years ago. And I mean, and that's what we had. And it's brought that back. And it's brought people together. I have people coming in the bank in January. When are we going to start seeing about the bandits? When are you going to start recruiting? You know, like, we, we don't do it here, of course. But they love seeing that on uh, the bandit website and that. They're ready, already starting to to talk bandit baseball. Oh, absolutely, absolutely love the Bancroft Bandits. They are so pleasant to have here in our community. Um, absolutely love going down and watching them play at our beautiful ballpark that we have down here. Um, and just the support of the local bandits back into our community. Um, they're always willing to help everyone out as if this was their hometown. Um, I think that the bandits are a blessing in, a, in our community. Bancroft is baseball. Um, every, I, I don't think there's a person in town who doesn't like it. If it is, I don't know who it is. I'm uh, Donnie Roberts. I sort of the organizer and running and, uh, for lack of a better word, the owner of the Pioneer Baseball League. I started a summer collegiate team up in Spooner, like an independent team, that just local college kids, and we traveled around the Midwest looking uh, for games and didn't pan out, but in the course of doing that, we, um, we drove through Iowa, Upper Missouri, and played some of the teams that were in the Mink League. And I found a couple of places in Iowa that, geez, just tugged at my heartstrings, and Bancroft was one of them. And I said, this is, they kept the love affair going in Bancroft with baseball, and it was dwindling a little bit and I thought, Let, let's start a team here. So I guess just out of uh, pulling a rabbit out of a hat, I started a team here in Carroll and we played some teams in Omaha for a summer. Then the next year I did something crazy and started a couple other teams and we formed a league, which was three years ago, you know, as of this year. The nine guys that run on the field, the thing we try to stress, they play as hard as any league in the, in the country. And talent wise, I don't know if you want to judge it by fielding a ground or hitting a ball, but their talent is is just as much as the Northwoods League, the Cape Cod League, in the heart and in the talent on the field, not much below it, trust me. I mean, if people come here, they're gonna be just as entertained as anywhere else in the country, and that's something that I love that gets portrayed here in Bancroft, that they know that the, the young men come here and they give it all they got to play the game of baseball that hopefully they love as much as I do. We had a player last year, uh, Ben Madison, who got drafted by the San Francisco Giants last year in the ninth round. Um, it definitely brought some uh, credibility to us that we are able to attract players that are on the ladder of baseball and we're just one of the steps on and that's what we want to be. We want to be one of the ladder, the steps on the ladder of a young man trying to go on his baseball career. We might be the last step, we might be the first step and hopefully in Ben's we're one of them steps and it showed across the country that's what we're trying to achieve here. Well, when the when Donnie wanted to bring the town, the, the ballpark, or the bandits to Bancroft, and uh, Christy Newman said, you bet, you know, he said, can you get 100 people to come watch your games? And she says, oh, oh definitely, that's no, no problem. Our job as a community is to make sure that we have a fun atmosphere there, that we do different games and fun activities for the crowd. And we're 
try to get the most people into the stands that our announcer gets into the game. Foul tip into the glove for strike three. And that'll do it for the Bandits as they cross two more across the plate. We played two here for Memorial Park as it's Bandits five, Gypsum Miners nothing. We head to the top of the third. You're listening to Bandits Baseball. And you can head behind the third base dugout for that. Fortunately, we do all, almost every team in the league, all the teams in the league, do have a number seven somewhere on their uniform too, in a small um, spot on the uniform that I guess is significant to me. And the significance of it is um, my son, who uh, got tragically killed uh, six years ago in a car accident, um, was number seven. So uh, uh, sports was a big uh, part of our lives together. We, um, we did hockey together, baseball, he was a football player. So our lives revolved around it. This is something that we did together. We built a baseball field in our backyard up in northern Wisconsin that still plays 50 to 100 games of baseball on it a year that we built as a family together. And it is named after him, Buckles Baseball Field, and he was Donnie the Third. Like I said, it's an intimate setting. The crowd is very knowledgeable about baseball. You know, um, other teams in the league might outdraw them. Carroll's our biggest drawing team, big city, but this town, there'll be games in this town where there's more people in the stands than there is in the population of this city.
baseball is portrayed on TV with that love affair, and I've always had it in my heart, and Bancroft, I mean, just be here for a minute. You drive down the street, and the highlight of the town is a church and a baseball field. St. John the Baptist, that's the name of our church. The Catholic Church is, is pretty well known. People come here because it's I think it's a bigger church. Um, we had our, our uh, centennial a few years ago, Quasqui Centennial, I guess it was, 125 years. Um, it's just a, a beautiful church. People like to come and um, they used to give tours. I don't think they do anymore, but um, we love our church. We love our windows. Our, our windows are, I think, the, the most prominent part of the church. They're beautiful stained glass windows. We, we originally thought our, our glass stained glass windows at St. John's were from Germany. Well, then when we had our Quasqui, we did a lot of looking into it, found out they were from Chicago. <laughs> but we, like, we love our glass windows. We, our stained glass windows at St. John's, we have not found them anywhere else. Mom and Dad would bring us, and we'd, we'd sit way up in the front pews. And, um, so I just remember going. I remember making my first communion here, my confirmation in St. John's. Um, got married in this church. So it's, it's, it holds a lot of memories for me. St. John's Church is, I think it gives people a little hope. They, they come in, they love our church. It's, it's beautiful, it's a beautiful church, St. John's. And I think it gives people a little hope in, in the world now. I think sometimes the world is a little depressing, but it gives us hope. My name is Eileen Hagist. I was born and raised here. Uh, my parents were Orville, or Orville and Rita Farrell. Went to school at St. John's, graduated in 1970. Still quite a few of my classmates around, so we like that area. Well, we're host parents, of course, which I consider a very important part of the bandits. I also uh, head up the host family program, so I make sure we have enough host families for the players that are coming. Um, in my mind, it was a no-brainer to me. I mean, I'm going to do it. Um, my husband was a little skeptical, and he says, no, I don't think so, and that. But my family, when I was growing up, my dad was big with the American Legion, and that's when we had American Legion baseball in Bancroft. And teams would come in and play for the weekend, and we always hosted. You know, and we had good experiences every time, you know. So to me, I was just, you know, certainly, you know, we'll, we'll do that. And once you get started, you're kind of hooked. I'd take the whole team if I could. Donnie Roberts had gotten a hold of Christy Newman and started talking about baseball, and I love baseball. Uh, I kind of missed it after my two boys were out of school. Uh, I thought, definitely, we want to we want to host. Since you're playing, I've been meaning to give that to you. Oh, thank you and so I much. thought, well, I better give it to you. Appreciate it, thank you. <laughs> Does Tyler have one? Hi. Does Tyler have one? Yep. Okay. I remembered when he was married to my husband, Ron, who works at Standard Feed Mill. Well, he really didn't want to, so I told I, I told Eileen at the bank when she was doing it that, oh, we would. And I go, but you better get a big spiel ready to convince Ron. So she had it all written out, and he, she called him. And she didn't get one word out, and he goes, we'll take two. <laughs> They're never going to regret it. it. It's You get so many blessings by having these kids here. Um, we're hosting Tommy Rios Cruz from Canada and Sean Ross from Puerto Rico. 
I mean, it's just great. We we learned something. I learn a lot from these kids. I don't know anything. This year we have one from Puerto Rico, Canada. I don't know anything about Puerto Rico. So it's, I'm interested in finding out. I'm interested in the Canadian. On, on, we were interested. He doesn't fish. I mean, who from Canada doesn't fish, you know? Well, the first year was... Uh boys from Venezuela and it was a little difficult because most of them did not speak English. We had three of them that year. Um, one of them spoke a little bit of English but the other two did not speak English at all but we you know we had the app on our, our cell phones and we kind of I had taken a few years of Spanish so I kind of we kind of knew we related that way. Last year for some reason one of my players, I just, him and I just really bonded from the get-go, Marcus. And I don't know, he's just like a third son to me. And he walked the 5K with me. Oh, Marcus texted me on Mother's Day and wished me a, a happy Mother's Day. And my son, uh, a half hour later, called me. I go, well, Matt, you're just a little late. He goes, why? I said, well, Marcus already texted me. He goes, well, that little piss ant. <laughs> Some, some of them are like, is this all there is, you know? And some of them love it. We've had boys here that when it's time to leave, don't want to leave. They love it here. They love they can go any place they want. Um, of course, when we had the kids from Venezuela, Venezuela is not doing very good right now. I'm sorry. And, uh, you know, they were safe. They like that. I think they like that people walk right up to them and start talking to them, introduce themselves, and say, we're glad you're here and, and things. And uh, I really haven't heard anything too negative or in the negative, I guess, from the players. They're here to play ball. That's their job. And I think they love the family life that they get when they're here. Having my own family I can kind of relate. I, I can relate to boys. I can relate to baseball, washing the uniforms and feeding them. They're always hungry. So, I, yeah, it helps me. It helps my mental state. <laughs> well, I think it adds something to your family because as soon as my two get here, I tell them, oh, you're part of the family now. And, you know, hopefully that continues. But I think sometimes my boys feel a little because when they come home, they gotta sleep on the couch, <laughs> you know? So it's just, you know, but I think that it's a good thing to get to bond with somebody else and meet different people from around the country. I hope they love it here. We love having them. You talk to your girlfriend today? You talk to yours? I'm not sure, I gotta call it after. Yeah, you better call it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> that I brings have, a smile I'm, to I'm your face, to doesn't it? Today, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I come from Puerto Rico. Um, we come from college, um, Clarendon College. We have been together two years. I'm from Canada. Uh, that's my home. I'm from Montreal, Quebec, where people speak French and stuff. And like uh, Sean said, I've been Clarendon College two years with him, so oh. we're pretty good friends. <laughs> They're really nice. I consider them like grandma and grandpa. They're really nice. Yeah, they're, they're a good person and uh, they make us feel like we're home. And that's that's what I like of them. They do everything they can to make us feel like we're, we're not strangers, but we're like in a family. We want you to keep in contact, you know. Yeah. It's really good because I was alone. Uh, it was it was the first time being with the new family. Uh, I never been with a new family in new home, and the way they treat, treat us is really good. I feel really comfortable. We go ahead in the morning. We, we come to um, eat lunch, we go again at one, and later we go to the ray room. I hope I had a good, good season to be pre prepared for the next university I'm going now. Two, one.
Swung on and it's gone if it stays fair. It is as it's a home run for Sean Ross. He got all of that one as he cranks it down the left field line. I just want to do good, and uh, if we can go get a championship, that's what I want to do this summer. It's pretty good, Phil. The grass is a little bit um, up, like, how I say that? It's pretty thick. long. It's thick. It's yeah. like thick, but the uh, curse say that it's going to be shorter. So, But it's a pretty good feel. I like that in feel a lot. You ready? The grass is so long though. Yeah, like it just, what? Oh, I think they, they will. But like this is like too long where like anything hit hard just gets killed. Pretty cool though. Field looks good. Did they told you what they're building out there? Uh, I guess some storage unit. I guess, it'd be cool. I mean, I don't know for sure. I just noticed that I was like, a couple of those games we put a putt out last year, like when Barrow was hitting, I would have hit, hit that. What's your guys' uh, opinion of uh, Coach Michael? He's really good. He's really nice. Yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, I feel comfortable. <laughs> we feel him. comfortable like, and uh, we see on him like he want to win. That's how we beat him yeah. last year one game. Oops, like, nice. My name is Michael Kieran. I'm the Bancroft Bandits head coach. I'm 25 years old. Um, as a player, I started my career at Clear Lake High School. Um, there we had a lot of good teams. My sophomore through senior year, uh, we won 28 or more games every year. And um, I was all district twice. I was all conference three times and I was all state my senior year. And then I went to Waldorf University. Uh, I was a starting pitcher for four years. Um, I was a starting outfielder for two years. Um, I was all-conference twice. Uh, my junior year was probably my best year. I uh, won the batting title for the North Star. Um, was first team all-conference. was all-conference as a utility player my junior year and senior year as an outfielder. And then I played for the Ozark Generals um, in the Mink League after my senior year. As a player, I was... I felt, felt like I was always pretty fundamentally sound. Personality wise, I was always pretty intense and passionate. I just loved playing the game. Um, I was an outfielder and a pitcher uh, in high school and college. Growing up, I really didn't do either that much. And then um, I was always able to play all nine positions, which kept me on the field from my youth until even after college. Just to give you a little bit of feel about his personality, um, one story that comes to mind is him as a player. We were playing against Mason City, and um, he unfortunately ran into a shortstop on a pop fly that went kind of between the infield and the outfield and completely got knocked out. And so I went out to center field, and he was unconscious. And, um, and I came over to him, and this is before uh, there was concussion protocol and all the steps that now we have to take. And so um, he got up, and. Um, I kind of had to force him to go to the dugout, but he didn't want to leave. And um, he wanted to keep playing. And even though he had been unconscious just a couple seconds before that. So he's just a kid that, um, as a player, just would never quit, would never give up. Um, and so I think that's carried forward to him as a coach as well. A lot of people, when they watch um, a, a baseball game, any athletic game, they watch the players. And I always kind of watch the coach. Um, I would watch the game, too, and watch the players. But I, I was always just really interested in the the mental side of the game and, and the organizational side and, and the man the managerial side of the game always intrigued me a lot. You know, Michael as a coach, it was fun to see him evolve um, as he started coaching because like I said, he started at the freshman level and um, I always felt he had the competitive fire of being like a minor league coach and um, it was it was hard for him initially to uh, to kind of t tone down that fire and coach freshmen and understand the difference in intensity level. Um, I think all of that is just, uh, he's just learning and he's just a kid that's always wanted to uh, learn the game when he was playing it and now when he's coaching it, he wants to learn how to be a better coach. And so I think that's led to his success. 
you know, he gave me the first opportunity. He could have been like, yeah, this 19 year old kid, he's not ready to coach. He played with most of these guys. Um, he's friends with some of these guys, you know, he's a brother, um, to one of the players, you know, I, it's not a good fit, but he took a chance on me and that really, I'll always be grateful for that. And I'll, I always owe him that is, is he kind of got my career going. And as a coach, we honestly had a perfect, I thought, relationship. Yeah, he's, he's just a guy that I've always appreciated. Um, you know, as a coach, I think he complimented um, me very well. And so we worked very well together because he um, brings a lot of intensity and, um, and fire that um, isn't naturally my strength because I, I just kind of am more of a laid back guy. Winning their school's second state baseball championship with a 4 11 record. Present the Lions in 2015 champions, the Lions from Port Lake and Port South Thompson. I think, I think the success of those teams um, really in all three of those state championship teams was just their, they were competitive and I think Coach Kieran offered that. Every business, which the Pioneer Baseball League is a, a business, has assets and Michael Kieran is one of our biggest assets. I mean, like anything, there's a, an up and a down to it, but Michael Kieran is definitely one of the league's biggest assets and not only from coaching, but from what he brings to this league, just in uh, enthusiasm. And he, he has the same enthusiasm I do to make this succeed. And he shows it every day. He won a championship his first year out. And trust me, I'll be more surprised if he don't win a championship this year than if he doesn't. You know, I, I will be much more surprised. Last year, it was weird because like in Clear Lake, when we won a championship, it was always, I was really emotional and just almost giddy afterwards. And last year was like a sense of relief. It, I enjoyed it. You know, but I really didn't get to enjoy it, honestly, until a couple days after because we were just so good in the regular season that I felt if we didn't win it, it was like a failure because of how good we were in the regular season. And, and when we won it, it, I remember the last out being caught at first base and I didn't even stand up. Everyone's standing up and I didn't even know he caught it until they rushed the field because I was just like, I can breathe now. And like, I've got the monkey off my back that I could win as a head coach and not just an assistant. And, I just put a lot of pressure on myself and, you know, I, this year hopefully I can enjoy it a little bit more and enjoy June and July a little bit more and not just look to August. Uh, so I'm Coach Van Vactor. My coaching experience is I first, um, two years ago, coached at Northland Community College in Minnesota. Um, we finished with second place finish in the conference out of 15 and then this last year I was at Valley City State and this will be my first summer ball experience with Bancroft. I think my title is the assistant coach. I, I will mainly be working with our pitching staff. Um, I think I'll coach first base a little bit and, and then just being around the guys and trying to help in whatever way I can. Um, as a player, I, I was, you know, I was a grinder, but I, I don't know if I was ever the top dog on any team. Um, I, I played summer ball in the Mink League under St. Joe, and I actually hold the current single season strikeout record there, so that one's pretty cool. So my last year in the Mink, um, I, I was playing with my best friends. Uh, Logan Campbell, Stephen D'Amico, Matt Diaz. We were we were the bullpen boys that uh, just had a great time, man. We knew it was our last ride, and and we had a ton of fun. Um, and then ultimately, we knew the goal was a championship, and we it was a three game series against against Mike uh, in the Ozarks, and we actually dropped game one, um, and I got lucky enough to get handed the ball game two, and I went out and had a pretty gutsy performance, and we found a way to win. I think three to one, um, and then. Then we forced a game three, and um, I think Mike actually threw for the Ozarks, and he threw well, but they pulled him, and the bullpen had some struggles, and we found a way to, to win a championship and, and dogpile, even though it had to be in front of Mike. It's interesting because, honestly, as a player, like player to player, I didn't necessarily like him. I respected him because he was very good, um, but I didn't really like him. I thought he was kind of obnoxious on the mound, and he kind of fed into the crowd. In my career as a player, I was super fiery. I brought a ton of passion. Um, my teammates, I think there's someone where they wanted me on their team, but they probably didn't want to play against me because I, I was a little chippy and yeah, I was all about it. Baseball is my life since I've been four years old and, and I brought it to the field every single day. So I didn't really like him, but when I got hired and I found out that he was 
uh, coaching. I was like, I got to suck it up, and, and St. Joe and Ozark have got to get along. Uh, so when I knew he was getting the job at Valley City State, Michael, uh, I, I I made sure to wear my St. Joe Mustang shirt and my ring that we received after winning the championship. I'm not sure how fond of that of that Michael was, but uh, I had I had a good laugh with it. Just even any, I remember like we played in the locker room, we played video games, and it was just so competitive between us and like we wouldn't talk to each other for hours after our game if one of us won or lost and there's a lot of excuses on both ends of why one won or lost and we're both going to give our players everything they have we just hope that they give us everything they have back and yeah i think he's got a really successful past and yeah i just i love coaching with jake he's a guy that you definitely want on your side um, he's a guy I would take into a dark alley, take, go to war with, go into a fight with, because he's just got your back. So uh, it, it was an awesome experience coaching with Michael. We butted heads a little bit, but um, we bounced off each other really well, and, and Michael and I got along really well at the end, and we, we really clicked together as a unit, and, and I think we pushed our guys really, really well at the end. I mean, he's a guy where I hated playing against him. I'm sure I'd, I would hate coaching against him, but I love coaching with him, and I'm sure I would have loved playing with him. I am excited for Michael to come. He has a passion for the game, and I think he has a passion to win and bring back championship baseball to Bancroft, and I know that's his dream. Last year, uh, Bancroft, I mean, they were the bottom half of the league and they would basically sell out every weekend we played here. Everyone was coming into the game. I feel like all 700 people that are in this town, it felt like they were at the game or surrounding communities were at the game. And I can't imagine what it'll be like this year when we hopefully have a really successful team and possibly a championship team. I think he's going to bring a lot. I know he coached the Albert Lee uh, team last year. Now I'm gonna my allegiance is to Bancroft and everything I've got is, is to the Bancroft Bandits organization and the people though are like they're just everyone just stops and waves they say hello they I don't know half the people that I have met and they've been nothing but welcoming and nothing but generous. But he actually called here and wanted to um, coach here and that that means something to me because he knows. Bancroft is baseball, and he wanted to be part of that tradition. And I think he's going to, I'm impressed with the caliber of players that he's been able to recruit. And I think we're going to, we're going to be right up there this year. It would be great if we can bring Bancroft the championship and to have something that they can look back on because they don't have their own baseball anymore. Bancroft is North Union now. They were North Central Kasuth. They're not Bancroft St. John's or Bancroft they're you know consolidated so if we can bring Bancroft a title that would mean everything to me and I think that would be a mission accomplished. Let's go through uh, kind of expectations standards I don't really like them. Rules. Expectations off the field, um, everything I've heard so far, you guys have been doing a good job about, but respect and have kind of gratitude for your host families, you know, for some of you guys, you guys have been playing summer ball for a while, so you know, you got to treat your host families right, um, it's something where you can build a good connection with them, a good relationship, I still talk to a host family and um, that I played with, or lived with when I played, so. It's one of those things where it's kind of a small family for the summer. Be the most feared team in the league, the team that others don't want to play. Again, hold yourself and others accountable. We will run up the score, okay? We will. We did it last year when I was a different team in the league. Pissed a lot of people off, I don't care. Be a shark and smell blood in the water, all right? This isn't Little League, okay? I don't give a shit if they don't like us, okay? I don't care if you're friends or whatever are playing on the other team, they're the enemy for the day. We don't be, feel bad for our enemy. We beat them 100 to zero. This is a little much, I know, but we dig six feet, put their bodies inside the hole, and then we bury them another six feet of dirt. Okay? We're here to beat the piss out of people. Okay? Two to one wins are cool, 
and they're fine if we're, if we're playing well and the other team's playing well. Two to one is not okay in my book if we're playing at 60% and the other team is playing like shit as well. We will aim for perfection. This is our goal, 40 and 0. This may not be obtainable in baseball, but we're going to aim small and we're going to miss small. This isn't a standard, this is an expectation, and this will happen. We will win the league's regular season and the postseason championship. Yeah, the weather's not great today. Uh, the biggest thing for us is to get out here, um, get the kind of the guys who've drove a lot, flown a lot, um, just kind of get knock some rust off. Big day for today is the pitchers um, with a game, four games ahead and first game on Thursday. So three days from now, we just need to get the pitchers some work and we'll see how it goes. Um, today for position players, will be pretty light. We just need to knock some rust off, just get a ton of reps hitting. So basically what I want us to work on is just hitting that ball up the middle with back control, you know what I mean, and with good backspin, okay? You can move the tee however you want, change it up, okay? Uh, my name is Aaron Mason, I'm from Omaha, Nebraska, and I uh, play at Doan University. Uh, I played here in Bancroft last summer. Uh, I just really like the town and the baseball atmosphere that it has. I really enjoy the host families. They're, they're really nice. Uh, I think we're going to be a lot better. We have a lot better talent and we got some good pitching and hopefully we'll be able to win the league this summer. You know, we recruited a lot of good players, a lot of good people. So that's a big thing. Um, just culture. That's a big thing me and Coach Van to believe in. It's just having the right guys here um, that not only are going to be good on the field, but be good off of it and to be good members of the community. Uh, I'm Austin Atwood. I'm from Michigan. I play down at Alcorn State down in Mississippi. It is a Division One. Mike saw a video of me throwing and he sent me a message and he's like, hey, he's like, are you have anywhere for a summer league? And I told him I was like, not yet. So signed in here and I'm pretty excited to go for it. Uh, four seam out. I'm originally from Kansas City. For this summer, I really, I've, I think we have one of the best pitching staffs. I haven't seen the other teams, but I think the pitching staff is really solid. As long as our hitters give us a, a lead, I think we're going to win a lot of ball games this year. So, Goal is to win the PCBL, PCBL championship and, and hopefully win every game. Um, that's our goal. may not happen, but our goal is to be perfect. Uh, four seam middle. What pitch are you still doing? Uh, four seam, two seam, slider curve, and a change. My name's Robert Galindo. My sons are Bobby and Julian Galindo. I'm Bobby Galindo, older brother. I'm from uh, El Paso, Texas. And I came from uh, the University of Southwest down there in New Mexico Hobbs. Uh, I'm Julian Galindo, uh, El Paso, Texas. I played at New Mexico Military Institute down there in Roswell. <laughs> we drove uh, about 22 hours from El Paso, Texas up to Iowa. Uh, the drive itself, it was terrible. You know, 24 hours on the road nonstop. Uh, you know, with this guy and uh, Miko So asleep for most of it. And uh, so, how is Iowa compared to Texas? Green. <laughs> My part of Texas is uh, pretty dry right now uh, versus here where we actually get to see some green grass. You know, it's a just, whole lot of green here. Yeah. <laughs> Back home, it's literally dirt everywhere you go. Dirt, dirt, dirt. Bobby, which is my oldest one, is uh, more of a hands-on person versus Julian. I'm more of a power hitter, you know, three, four, five kind of guy. Fires swung on, hit in the air to right field. This one's carrying, and it's gone. Grand slam with two strikes for Bobby Galindo to tie things up here in the top of the sixth. But anywhere in the lineup, you put me up, I'm a rake no matter where. Defensively, you know, grew up, <laughs> grew up behind the plate, you know, as a catcher.
Dylan's more mental, more technique. Uh, mentally, mentally, we're pretty much the same. Uh, the only thing is, he hits for power, I hit for line drives, gap shots, doubles, uh, try to drive runs in. Pitch. And hit to deep right field. And it's gone. A two run homer for Julian Galindo. Other than that, I'm probably faster than him. <laughs> uh, taller than him. Throw a little bit harder than him. That's pretty much it. He's shaped like an Oompa Loompa. But that's it. Uh, to have both of them play together, it's it's actually something that I've always wanted. I've never had the opportunity to have both of them in one team. They've practiced together, but they've never actually played together. Oh, oh yeah. we've been looking forward to this ever since we got the phone call or text. Have one boy start off a game, and then I'd have to travel across town to go see the other boy on the second game. So having them in uh, one team for the first time, it's... Actually, I'm going to like it. I don't have to travel anymore. <laughs> yeah. Missouri, 3-2 pitch. Runners go. Strike three call. Missouri finally nails it down. Nile ball. And that's nine in a row for the Tigers. So long from Columbia, Missouri, where Mizzou defeats right. Wichita I'm State. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's probably my favorite thing to do. It is run a four-seater on a left Gotta love that. Yeah, now ball from uh, Atlanta, Georgia. I went to uh, University of North Carolina Pembroke um, for my last senior year this past year, and uh, I, for the first time in my career, I started. I went to Mizzou for uh, my junior year, and um, that was really, really fun to compete in the SEC against a lot of really talented players. A lot of talent was out there. Strike three called. Frozen on off speed at 77 miles an hour. Well, now ball picking up where Andy Tolkien at the end of last night dropped it off. I'm probably like 90 to 92 area, 93 maybe. Slider gets up to 78. I think my movement and uh, the way I'm able to attack hitters is probably my best uh, attribute. I don't really throw incredibly hard, so I have to use movement, use location, things like that that will, you know, mess with the hitter's timing and things like that. So. I mean, coming here, it was kind of like 700 people. That's that's real small. So I was nervous at first, but so far it's been it's been real nice. I like the guys, and uh, my host family's great. So I mean, so far it's been it's been real good. Bankrupt on three, one, two, three. Bankrupt. Hope we win a championship here, and I hope I can do well enough to help maybe make an all-star game and hopefully all that gets me enough looks to possibly sign a free agent deal if possible and if the draft works out then the draft works out but you know just leaving it up to to, to God and to myself really <laughs> that's all I can do Hand in there. Bring him right on He's got teeth. Hey, boy. He's got teeth. Oh, boy. That's why you hold him like that. All right, let's let's cage him up. It's pretty slimy, isn't it? It's not too bad. I've had salamanders before. Let's cage him up. It's good fishing bait. Dude, let's literally keep him for a mascot. We have yeah? We have to. You got caged? No, but we can get one. I think we should cage him up. He's 100% a mascot. Fish tank? That's all I'm saying. Get like a little layout. Where right? can we get a fish tank? Do you know where we get a fish they tank? They need water. They need moisture. All right, so we can't live without it. We need a fish tank. All right, what are we naming them? Um, Obviously, Bandit. That was. Is, is it a guy? Yeah, Bandit. I mean, that works. All right, Bandit. Bandit. Bandit and mascot. Well, should we let him swim for the night or what? Yeah, you know, see if he's here in the morning. I'd be down. That's how you know it's meant to be, right? Absolutely. Sounds good. If not, then let him. All right, Bandit. It's been good. I hope you're here tomorrow. Not down the drain. We need a fish bowl. This event is the meet and greet that we have for the host families and 
the bandits and it's an opportunity for us to just kind of get to know each other a little bit and our rotary puts on a meal for it and we kind of go over some of the things that we expect from the players and you know what their expectations are of us as a community and just kind of answer any questions that need to be answered. So that's kind of how I heard about it. Um, and then Sean McGuire was my pitching coach, who also won a state championship, I believe, when they were in North Central Kassoon. Um So it, I've definitely been around people um, who know the tradition and have kind of passed it on to me. You know, I, I definitely wanted this job um, last year. wasn't fortunate enough to get it, but uh, I'm here now. And I'm really excited about it. The expectations on the field is to uh, win the regular season and postseason championship and just play a good baseball that hopefully you guys can be proud of and love to bring a championship home here to Bancroft. That's uh, kind of our number one priority and we have a lot of winners on this team and I think it's something that um, they are definitely into do as well. Um, they have kind of the same expectations. And, you know, who knows, may have a professional guy or two by the end of the year and that'd be pretty cool as well to have that. So, yeah, yeah, if anything, let me know. I feel like I'm pretty personable. Maybe last year when I was now really, I wasn't as much. But <laughs> <laughs> here I'm now. So. Well, we're yelled at. I'm going to look for you. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you for the privilege and the blessing of having these young men come to Bancroft and play baseball and be an inspiration to the community and to the young people of our area. Uh, we thank you for the energy that they bring, uh, for the sportsmanship that they exhibit, uh, and the lifelong memories uh, that we will all benefit from. Um, let us be a blessing on them, as well as them be a blessing to us. And speaking of blessings, let us bless this food. Uh, meeting the people in the town, the parents, was, was pretty positive. I enjoyed it a lot. It was, it was definitely good for, for me and them to get to know one another, and at least to just show face. So it, I think it's just good for 
for me too to be appreciative of the people who've opened up their homes for our team. I mean, I just think a lot of people are excited for the season. A lot of people are excited. Um, you know, it, it's that opening day buzz. I think a lot of people are just excited to get things going. Um, yeah, and then with, with games tomorrow, I think everyone's eager to see how we do and how we start and high expectations. A heck of a battle here from Kyle and Russell on the wind up on the one two. Swung on late and a slow roller. Going to get past the third baseman, Rogers. One run scores, two will score. And Lance Russell singles to left and gets two RBIs here for the Bandits as they now lead three to nothing. It's a new look for both of the teams as well as new coaching helms. And the one two, Erickson goes chasing high and away. His third strikeout of the game and a perfect 10 for Ryan Bird. 10 strikeouts and four innings pitched. 0-2 to Warren. The pitch, swing and a miss, and Voigt strikes out the side, and that is the ball game. Bancroft Bandits advance to 1-0 on the year after taking the first game of the year on Albert Lee's hike field. Yeah, it was definitely what I wanted to accomplish, you know, whether it was against Albert Lee or really anyone in the league, we want to win the first one. Um, first one's a big one. You want to set the tone early, um, have teams take you serious and have your players um, take, take games serious. And it's a lot, it's, it just is a lot more fun to coach and play baseball when you're winning. Niall's kind of chomping at the bit, you know, Niall last night he's, was really motivated. Um, today he's, ex he's excited to throw in front of 500 plus. Um, and he's a guy that, he's a competitor. Uh, he's a guy I, I love to death right now as a competitor. And it reminds me a lot of myself when I would pitch, just no one's gonna beat you and you can beat anyone mentality. And I, I think he's really gonna do really, really well tonight. He's, he's locked in. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back here. Welcome back to baseball as your Bancraft Bandits return to Historic Memorial Park tonight for another nine-inning contest against last night's opponent, the defending champion Albert Lee Lakers, as your Bandits were able to take the season opener at Hike Field in Albert Lee in an 8-1 to one victory over the Lakers last night. As well for your Bancraft Bandits, they welcomed in New head coach Michael Kieran, who last year brought the title to Albert Lee, and then he carried his dynasty with him to Bancroft, recruited an amazingly talented star-studded team, and we've only caught a glimpse last night, so we're hoping for bigger things offensively here tonight and to continue our dominating pitching all preseason long. It's been championship or bust, as obviously they're wanting the regular season title and beyond that. And for Albert Lee, they got their work cut out for them once again for the second straight night. pitch welcome back to memorial park and welcome back to baseball bandits fans as we have a great turnout beautiful weather everything set up and all we need now is a strong performance from tonight's starting pitcher niall ball as he's been chomping at the bit to get this first start of the summer and with chilla coffee getting rained out this past thursday he got bumped up to today the home opener Niall Ball sitting in the range of about 90 to 93 miles per hour on a fastball, and he's got a crisp slider, and he likes to play around with his off-speed, mixes up the pitches very well. Ball quickly works ahead after walking Davidson, so we're hoping for something positive here. Just one strike away, or a ground ball could turn two. So ball comes set. The 0-2, Davidson takes off, swing and a miss, and Boggs throws the second. Double play as he gets him out, Boggs with the throw. Two down in just one pitch. Grounded over towards Lance Russell at second, he makes the scoop and the throw. 
Three up, three down, and the Nile Wall retires the Lakers. One, two, three, as we'll go to the bottom of the first. Still scoreless. Hopefully the bands can get on the bats. And the pitch. This one, he gets him chasing up high for strike three. Finds himself down 0-2 for the third straight time. The pitch and a swing and a miss, and Jesse Bloom has struck out the side for Albert Lee. The 1-1 one, one to Sam Warren, and a slider that gets over the plate for strike two, and I hope these fans are thirsty. As we got a 1-2 count to our first beer batter of the year, Sam Warren. The one, two, ball fires in, a swing and a miss, and there's your discounted beer band with fans. Warren goes down swinging. Let the bud light flow once again. Pitch the at bat, ripped into right center field. This one's going to be down in the gap, and Lance Russell, a perfect four for four to start off his summer. And he is making himself right at home in Bancroft. The 1 1. Swung on, ripped to center field, but right to Brad Morris. He doesn't have to move to that one at all. And the 0 2 count now to Soto. Third pitch the at bat gets away in the dirt. Rogers throw, not in time. Russell beats hey, it with another Gordon. stolen base. His second on the year. Hawks finds himself down 0-2, still alive in the count. The pitch. This one over the outside part of the plate, and Boggs goes down looking as the Bandits leave two runners stranded. Pitcher's duel continues here, as neither teams have the answer yet to Nile Ball or Jesse Bloom. 2-2 two -two here to Steinmeier as count gets back to even and ball sets. The pitch, and he sits him down with a slider for strike three. A 1-2. Swing and a miss, and Rodgers goes down swinging for the second straight time here in the third. He winds, fires, swing and a miss, strike three. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Takes the bat for the Lakers, designated hitter number 23. The pitch right by him for off speed, strike three. Number nine for ball here. Yeah. The pitch and ground it back up the middle, ball right back there once again, and he flips it to Galindo for out number three. One one count, one down here to Abel Pena. The pitch swung on, hit in the air towards right. And this one is gone! Home run for Abel Pena to finally break the tie here in the bottom of the sixth. How about that, Abel Pena with a solo shot here off of Jesse Bloom. And now the Bandits finally crack the scoreboard as they lead one to nothing. Next to bat for the Bandits, shortstop number 12, Sean Durant. 2-2 two -two here to Ross. The pitch swung on through the 5-6 hole, and this will be a single for Sean Ross as he finally gets his first hit as a Bandit. Next to bat for the Bandits, third baseman, number 18, Tommy Tomito Reyes Cruz. Come on in, come back. And the pitch, Ross takes off. Cruz hits this one in the air to deep right. Could it be off the wall? This will be extra bases for Cruz. Ross will hold up at second, and Cruz comes in for the double to right. 
finally the Bandits getting some life here offensively. To complement the tremendous pitching of Niall Ball, this one almost carried out, but off the wood fence. And Bloom going to stay in here with one down. Hold on. We'll see Dean Griffin head to the mound for a quick word here. And we're finally starting to see some offense. And he gets him chasing high for a swing and a miss and a strike three as the Bandits leave yeah, two runners stranded. However, the solo shot from Abel Pena makes the score now. Bancroft one, Albert Lee zero. Two one. Swung on, hit deep to left field. This is past the fielder and God, home run for Tyler Boggs. Two nothing now for Bancroft. And he timed that one up perfectly. Just got just enough of the barrel on it. Sends it out of here for the second Bandit home run of the night. Nine one two due up for the Lakers here, only needing three more outs and less than two runs to hang on to our second straight victory to start off the 2019 summer. And hopefully looking for a win behind the right arm of Niall Ball here in the ninth. And fires, fastball, broken bat, ground ball over towards Russell, out number one here in the ninth. The pitch, swung on, hit in the air towards Mason and right. And he makes the grab for out number two to put away Davidson. Lakers down to their final out with Austin Next Portner. Next for the Lakers, shortstop number 13, Austin Portner. Portner 0 for 3 with two strikeouts up to this point. Steps into the right-handed batter's box. Ball takes his spot back on the rubber. Works from the wind. Swung on. Grounded to the left side, ball makes the grab and the throw, and it's away. Be a throwing error on Nile Ball as he reaches base on the throw. After Portner reaches by a throwing error, the 0 1 count here to Morris as he pops this one out of play for strike two. A 1 2. To Morris, the pitch. Swing and a miss, and Niall Ball has done it. No hitter in the home opener as Baycroft wins it two to nothing. Final score, Albert Lee zero, Bandits two. Niall Ball throws a no hitter tonight. Standing here with tonight's undisputed player of the game, Mr. Niall Ball. Nine innings pitched, no hits, 13 strikeouts. Niall, you are insane tonight, man. Talk yeah. about your performance. I uh, just tried to hit spots, did as best I could. Um, tried to locate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tyler did a great job catching me behind the plate. Fantastic. He made all my pitches look really good, and uh, I just tried to do what I do out there. That's all I can say, honestly. Thank God. Glory to God. Thanks. Now, but, uh, congratulations yeah. on no man. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. Now, Ball was super special tonight. He, he came in from inning one and just dominated the zone. He had really good fastball slider command. Um, showed the change up just for a show pitch, but he was around the zone and he was ahead all the time. And when he wasn't, he, he got right back in and, and won his evens and got a lot of strikeouts. I think he finished with 13 on the night. So it's that one? Yeah. They kept him in? Yeah. So you threw that ball away purposely? 
Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. I threw that, I threw I that said, away. Yeah. Because if, 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 if I eat it, then that's an infield hit. So I'm like, I gotta swing this. Either he's gonna be out, or he's, there's gonna be an error. It's not gonna be a hit. Though. <laughs> so I just took it and I just launched it. Cool. I was like, all right, that's an error. I didn't even know you were at a no hitter right. Yeah, that yeah. showed you how smart I, I am. I, there. I, at like about the seventh, I was like, I don't think I've given up a hit yet. Cool. So, but I don't want to say anything because you don't want to jinx it. Right, okay. right. Did you hear me yelling? Oh, yeah. Sweet. Right yeah, there. we like the third baseline. Yeah. I heard it. It was perfect. Sweet. It's perfect. Well, congrats. Thank you so much. Good win. Thank you. On 2 to 0, um, had solo home runs by Abel Pena and Tyler Boggs. It was, uh, I mean, it was pretty cool to see some balls leave the park. Um, Abel's been swinging it really well. Uh, the big story of the game was Niall Ball. I mean, that's why we signed him, just because I didn't think he'd throw a no-hitter, but I knew he was going to be really, really good and pretty dominant in this league um, with the fastball and slider he has. Hey, I, well, see, my roommate, Ryan, had the title after his incredible performance yesterday, so I told him before the game I'm going to have to have this back. And uh, so I had to, that was that was really my main focus was to get this back. I wasn't even really trying to win the game. I just wanted to know. <laughs> Look at him, he's upset. But oh yeah, yeah. he's hurt. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah, just baffled him. It was that's one of the first ones I've been a part of that's meant something. So it was really really cool to see. Let's start with college baseball. Today, Bismarck State College announced who will lead the program this spring. Michael Kierig was named the head coach. Kierig was an assistant coach at Valley City before he was hired. And he helped coach Valley City to the North Star Tournament Championship game. Coaching collegiate programs as an assistant, and then uh, I think the success I had in the summer being a head coach is making me feel like I'm ready. But also, I've had some really good head coaches that I've worked for that have helped prep me for uh, this moment, I think, and this opportunity. With two outs, and Chris Crosby, all he needs is one more out, and your Bancroft Bandits bring another championship back to the town of Bancroft. Listen to this place. Crosby from the windup, the 0-2. Sweet and a miss, but it's in the dirt, Galindo with a late throw to first, in time, and the Bandits have done it! They come back, seven to five, and your Bancroft Bandits are the 2019 league champions! They dogpile by the mound, and soak it in, Bandits. They bring the championship back to Title Town, Iowa, in the sport of baseball, Chris Crosby, Nine strikeouts and nine hitters faced. The Bandits pull back the unlikeliest of comebacks. Bancroft defeats Carroll 7-5. to five.
and your Bancroft Bandits are the 2019 PCBL League Champions.